Billy Can with thee. I am Deep Mahostaman, and I'm the regular guy from Long Island. Talking about a start of a wine collection. Some of you have seen my wine cellar video before, but this is about creating a new wine collection. We just came down here yesterday to Fort Worth, Texas and moved my daughter in. She is studying now medicine at, a, at uh, one of the medical schools here in Fort Worth. This is her apartment. And as a housewarming gift, I gave her the initial wine collection. So I want to talk you through about how I think about starting a wine collection. First of all, it's a great time right now to start a wine collection because you have so many of the top wines of the world in excellent years of vintage that are coming out right now or just have come out. So for instance, I have told you all about the 2016 Cabernets. Obviously Cabernet is my favorite wine and Cabernet Sauvignon 2016s were excellent. So you need to stack up on them. The whole entire harvest was rated 98 points by Wine Spectator. But also right now we have the 2015 Brunellos out and the Brunello de Montalcinos 2015 was again a fabulous year. The 2015 Chiantis are out, they were excellent. Even 2016 Chiantis are out now and they are pretty good. And then 2015 was also an excellent year for Bordeaux wines from France. And then last but not least we have the 2017-2018 Marbecs out, they were excellent wines. So those are all wines that you can, you know, lay back a little bit, buy now or over the next year or two and enjoy them, some of them now, but others a year or two down the road. So here are a couple of um, my basics. Um, we are obviously here filming in America. In America, you want to have a wine, starting wine collection that is based on Cabernet Sauvignon as a red wine and Chardonnay as a white wine. Those are the two top wines in America. So I did that too. I have um, for her three different Chardonnays. In fact, four different Chardonnays. And I, I threw in one Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is a little bit of a lighter white wine. So that makes sense to me. And um, you don't really have to be too concerned about white wines. You also don't have to, to have too many of them because you want to drink them within the next six months or 12 months. So you never want to really sell out these American Sauvignon Blancs or Chardonnays. On the red wine, of course, um, you may consider and you have maybe planned to keep these 2016 Cabernets over the next 10 years. And so if you are starting a wine collection, the most important thing about the temperature that you store these wines in you don't really need the wine cellar right away, right? It is important that the wine is at an equal temperature. So here in her apartment in Texas, it's about 70, 72 degrees, same temperature in winter, same temperature in summer, you know, with the air conditioning running and with the heat running in winter, that is good. Of course, 58 degrees would be better. 58 degrees to 61 degrees is really the proper wine storing temperature but as long as you have an even you know 72 degrees not warmer than that and you don't change the temperature much it's okay these wines will easily last five years ten years no problem humidity is good right ideally wine wants 65 percent humidity so that one you have to consider a little bit and uh, if you don't have a wine cellar with proper temperature control. You can also, of course, buy a wine unit, these small little under the counter cases that typically hold 50 or 100 bottles, or even stand up ones that hold 150 bottles. They are temperature controlled and humidity controlled. They typically cost the big ones $1,500 to $2,000. That's when you wanna buy more expensive wine, you wanna have a unit like that. But for her, for her starting collection, a starting collection of some 20, 30 bottles, that's over the top, you don't need it. So we bought her some elephants, nice little wire steel 
wine racks, two of them, and we're gonna put them on the kitchen counter or above the kitchen uh, cabinets, we'll see. And now let me introduce some of these wines. The basic principle here is keep it simple. If you are a starter in a wine collection and double down on wines where you're building islands of knowledge, like Chardonnay and Cabernet, built, built on Chardonnay, Cabernet and Chardonnay, would be a recommendation. And then add a couple of whites and reds to it. So for instance, right here, starting with the whites, starting with the uh, Chardonnays. So Candle Jackson, Winter's Reserve, one of my favorite, favorite Chardonnays, and I've trained my daughter properly. I know she likes it too, so we have a couple of bottles of that in here. This is the 2018, and that's a Chardonnay that's a little bit more oaky and fruity, no buttery, oaky and fruity. So that is in here, and that is, I believe, rated, let's see, um, Candle Jackson, 3.8, $11. So then a step up from that, we have the Stack Sleep Wine Cellar. This uh, Chardonnay is called the nickname Carina. Stack Sleep is about $25. This one is rated in Vivino a 4.0. You know, concentrating on Chardonnay, one other white wine in here, Sauvignon Blanc. This is the Honig. So if you guys watched my Sauvignon Blanc wine tasting on the boat in the Great South Bay, I tasted the Honig. I think the Honig won the wine tasting of the Sauvignon Blancs. That's why I threw this one in here. That's $15, rated 3.9 on Vivino. Then I also put one sparkler in, and instead of buying expensive French champagne, I got her a Prosecco. This is an excellent rated Prosecco by Wine Spectator. I think it's 93 points, and it's um, probably I paid $21 for the bottle. So that sits right here on the trunk. So that's with the white. Again, not going crazy on white because you wanna drink these white wines quickly. Switching over to the reds. First red, I told you about the 2016 so many times, 2016 Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa. This one here, is the hall we in our family drink it quite often it's about a 45 dollar bottle not 40 dollars i think i paid for this and the hall is rated 4.2 in 2016 4.2 and i got it for 38 dollars even then i have here a bargain cabernet you all are familiar with the duck horn vineyard i covered it multiple times duck horn has a lower priced beginner wine called decoy incredibly good incredibly affordable this decoy cabernet and this is a 2017 decoy cabernet is 20 dollars 3.9 on vivino then if you watched my 20 under 20 video one of the top three the bella cosa Cabernet Sauvignon 2016, $20. Rated 4.1 on Vivino, 4.1, 4.0 in most ratings on Vivino. And then finally, I also very much liked and have recently tasted one of my wine tasting, the Faust from Johann Goethe, Faust, the legendary play, German play with the devil taking over the soul of a poor man. That Faust is a 2017. So 2017 as a year is not as good as a 2016, but the Faust 2017 was rated 4.3 on Rivino and 92 points in Wine Spectre as the 2017. So that's a good wine to also have in your cellar. That's the Cabernet side. That's the base of the new emerging collection here. So then I chose as a second wine, easy to drink with a pizza, uh, Chianti's. And on the Chianti side, I pulled in the Tenuta di Reneri. This is a Reserva. This is a 2015. 2015 was a great wine in Chianti Classico. That wine, $25 and it's rated 4.0 at uh, Vivino and I think 
Um, in Wine Spectator, it got 92 points or so. We also threw in, and I think that makes perfect sense, in a wine collection, Pinot Noir. And I selected two Pinot Noirs. The won my Pinot Noir wine tasting that I just recently conducted. Raw 2018 Pinot Noir, excellent, very fruity. Um, these want to drink a little bit earlier, so you don't want to put those away for five years or so. This one, I'd say in the next three years, you should probably consider drinking. All time classic, Belle Gloss. Now the Belle Gloss comes in three or four different interpretations. This one is the Las Alturas, Las Alturas, rated 4.3 by Vivino. And I got this bottle for her for $49. Actually 4.4, the raw was 4.3, this is 4.4 on Vivino. Classic to have in the collection, the emerging collection. Then I figured let's do one more red wine. And what we did is the Malbec. Marbecs right now, 2016, 2017, 2018, phenomenal. So this one is a Unanimi. Unanimi was recommended by James Suckling. He gave that wine 93 points. And um, we have it in Vivino at 4.1, $20. Can't go wrong with that. So we have that in the collection. That goes back on the trunk. And the other one is an all-time classic, never wrong, Catena Marbeck 2017. The Catena was a 4.0. I got this bottle for $16. Great item in the collection. Okay, and then we went crazy with a couple of more bottles here. This one is a favorite of mine. I threw this in. Not necessarily recommending that in the starting wine collection you go for Brunello. But since 2015 was such a great year, I put one away here for her, the 2015 Brunello. This is the Casanova di Neri. Vivino rates the Brunello 4.3. I got this for $60. And then I figured younger people need tequila. That's the whole entire selection. I'm gonna open one of those up now. So if I'm correctly oriented, we have the cork screws right here. And by the way, if you do a wine collection, you need a good cork screw. In fact, I'm seeing here, there's now multiple. A beautiful top Vader's cork screw. And then the ones that go with air, beautiful. And then we also got her an aerator. So if you don't want to decant, if you use the aerator to uh, pour into a glass, that does a lot for some of the older wines. So I am choosing for tonight, because I am in town and we want to drink this together, this beautiful bottle of Brunello di Montalcino, and it's the Casanova di Neri. $60. And right out. Now, we need a decanter for Brunello. The decanter is right under here. Let me just quickly look into this. Not here. Maybe here. Nope, not here either. Has to be somewhere. Right there. All right, I found the decanter. Why decanting? This is a five-year-old wine, 2015. It's a Sangiovese grape. Sangiovese grape likes to interact with air. And so pouring this into this wide decanter, which is a wide vessel, helps a lot of the wine to get into action with air. Now I could leave it on the counter for an hour or two. It will make the wine get better. But just that I poured it out of the bottle and into the decanter is doing the trick already. So wine glass. Oh my God, we got beautifully shaped wine glasses. They are perfect for a Brunello. So this collection is going in the right direction. Let me pour here a good chunk for me. 
because I am definitely finishing this glass tonight. Beautiful, dark, cherry, red color. That's what you would expect from a Bonello. Some nice fine lines indicating strong alcohol content. Sniffy sniff. The cherry pops right out. Black cherry. Combination of sour cherry, black cherry, sweet cherry. Beautiful. All right, let's give it a whirl. Phenomenal. James Suckling is right. Definitely over 95 points. I would say I give this 97 points myself. Or on Vivino, I give it a 4.7. Excellent wine. $60. Buy it and put it away for a couple of years. It will only get better. That is it for the show tonight. And remember, keep it simple for your initial collection. Don't go overboard by investing into equipment. If you have air condition and you keep your house at 70, 72 degrees, you don't need to go crazy. Concentrate on Cabernet, concentrate on Chardonnay, and then do a couple of other bottles to spike it up a little bit. If you like this show, press the button over here, like it, and the button over here, subscribe to it. Also, follow me on Vivino. I'm a heavy rate on Vivino. Until next Sunday, see you soon.